is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. The Halo's looking to bounce back after getting shut out last night by the Houston Astros and Justin Verlander. Tonight is another day. They are two back in the wild card, and tonight it's game two against the Strohs. As we take a look at that wild card standing, we mentioned two games back of the Minnesota Twins, who are currently in that second wild card spot. Yankees, number one spot, three and a half games above the Twins. The Twins currently leading the San Diego Padres in that one. So everything for the Angels as we continue to talk about it is must win. As we welcome you back to Angels Baseball here on Fox Sports West along with Mark Gubiza, I'm Victor Rojas. And it doesn't get any easier for the Angels. We talked about this on the last road trip. We knew going into this homestand it was going to be tough when you've got the Houston Astros, Texas Rangers, Cleveland Indians. And uh, you know, you, you got to try to win series, if not sweep series now. Yeah, Victor, you need to play excellent baseball. Last night they got a very good start from Garrett Richards. But when you look, 11 of the last 18 games, home games, they're going to play some very good teams. You got the Astros. We know how good they are. Texas Rangers, they've been swinging the bats well, and they've played very well against the Angels this season. Cleveland, on that historic run, 21 straight wins. They're going to be coming in next week. And then the last three games of the season against Seattle, we saw how well they could play up in Seattle last time in Safeco Field. So they're going to have to play very good baseball. They're going to have to swing the bats much better. Justin Berlander was just too good last night. But the bottom line is you got to find a way to score some runs. That might mean steal some extra bases, get some home runs, but also try to manufacture some runs. Hey, you go back to uh, the last road trip. The Angels were scoring some runs early, but as of late, it's been a struggle for this ball club, just averaging a little over two runs over the last five games. And that's not going to get it done, especially with this current schedule. Mike Fires is on the mound for the Astros. He's making a spot start. Tyler Skaggs, a lefty, on the mound for the Angels. We're just about ready for baseball here at the Big A. Sit back, relax. Going to bring you the lineups and the first pitch when we return.
California Land Rover retailers. Buy Jack in the Box. Come try the new $4.99 Smokey Jack Burger combo with small fries and a small drink. Limited time only. And by your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. Welcome back out to the big A game two of this three game set against the visiting Houston Astros sitting atop the American League West with an 87 and 57 mark while the Angels come into play with a 73 and 71 record and uh, 14 back in the West as we mentioned already two games back of that wild card. Let's take a look at A.J. Hinch's lineup for the Strohs game number 145 for both teams. George Springer will lead things off. He is in right field today with a lefty on the mound. A little change up in the lineup. Bregman at third base, Altuve at second, Correa at shortstop. Gaddis will serve as a DH. Guriel at first, Cameron Maben, the former Angels in left. Max Stasi behind the plate, Jake Marisnik, Riverside product, out at center field. He will bat ninth. Taking on Tyler Skaggs. This will be his 13th start of the season. One and five and a 4.86 ERA, Gooby 63 innings, 67 hits, 60 strikeouts, better the last time out. Yeah, my go-to is for Tyler Skaggs to be successful in this game against a very deep, potent lineup for the Houston Astros, is that arm side success with his fastball. He had that two-seamer work very well, getting it off the outside part of the plate, expanded the strike zone to set up his very good finisher with his curveball. He's got a lot of swing and misses so far this season with his curveball batting average very low against that pitch set up with that arm side fastball last time out for Tyler Skaggs. Well let's take a look at the defense that will support him and uh, no real changes for the Angels when it comes to the defense. Upton, Trout, Calhoun in the outfield, Valbuena, Simmons, Phillips and Crone around the infield from third to first. Our team Maldonado behind the plate and CJ Crone at first base. I'll tell you that play he made last night really kept the Angels in the game. If that ball gets down the line, if he doesn't make that play, 997 fielding percentage, which has increased over the last three seasons. A good range. That ball by Josh Reddick, which by him he was able to get that tag to base. Otherwise, it's going to be second and third, maybe even a run scored if it wasn't for that play by CJ Crone. You mentioned it in the open how well Garrett Richards pitched. Last night kept this a very good offensive ball club in check. Let's see if Tyler Skaggs can do this. The same thing tonight. Skaggs ready. First one tonight is up and away. Springer hitting 292. 31 home runs. 76 runs batted in. I should let the, uh, the Angels last night were limited to just two hits. Houston had six. That was it. And three of them in the second inning. That's when they scored the one and only run. That's that good arm side fastball right there at 92. Stayed on top. Hit the outside part of the plate. Good pitch from Skaggs. Springer had a one for four game last night with a single. Two balls, one strike. Corey Blazer called the balls and strikes tonight. Pat Holberg at first. Tony Randazzo at second. Jerry Davis over at third. That's out toward left, towering shot, up to moving over. Oh, ball kept carrying out. And that, look at that <laughs> look surprise at his, look for up, and it <laughs> seemed to a, a wow on that one. That looked like a routine fly ball, and that ball just kept carrying and carrying all the way back to the warning track. I don't think he found it at first. Then he does. Maybe that was the issue. It's that time of night. Yep. With the baseball because of <laughs> <laughs> that's a great look. Welcome to Southern California. One down. Bregman shooting one toward the middle. Simmons to his left has it. Two down. They like those quick outs right there, especially against the very hot hitter against the Angels over the last couple series for Bregman. And keeping Springer in the yard. He had nine leadoff home runs. Hit that ball pretty well, but up to be able to run that one down to the warning track. So two quick outs with Altuve coming up. That's what you want him to come to the plate with no one on. Jose Altuve hitting 349. Somehow the Angels kept him hitless last night going 0 for 4. Had some odd swings early against Garrett Richards. Oh. 
pushes the bunt on the first base side. Skaggs might have to field it, throw, and can get him. Infield base hit. Skaggs did everything he could possibly do to make that a close play. Flip that ball as quick as possible at Tuve. Perfect location for that bunt. Left-handed pitcher generally going to fall towards the third base side of the pitching mound. Flips it quickly at Altuve, just too fast, beats it out. Now, if you're going to do that, more than likely you're going to see Altuve on the move with a two-out bunt single. 31 stolen bases, and that's one issue that Tyler Skaggs has had for the last couple of years. He's given up and allowed seven stolen bases in eight attempts. Carlos Correa at the plate. Astros shortstop last night. Had a one for four game with a single and a run scored. It's 42 games due to a torn thumb ligament. Astros went 20 and 22 in his absence. Two quick outs and a bunt single. Man at first. Gray is shooting one back up the box. Altuve will turn it head to third. The throw goes to second. I saw this a little bit last night with Astros hitters jumping early on pitches in the count. Yeah, you saw Springer take a couple pitches early on, but then after that, a lot of first pitch swing. We saw that last night taking some pitches against Richards, but they didn't want to fall behind in the count. Same thing you're going to try to do against Skaggs. When you think about the numbers against his secondary pitches compared to his fastball, you're going to be more aggressive swinging at the first pitch. Here's Evan Gaddis to DH. 266 average on the year. 11 home runs. 45 runs batted in for the Dallas native. Take down at it. Altuve standing at third base, Correa at first. Lifted out to shallow right. Long run in for Cole. He's there. The runners will be stranded as we hit at the bottom of the first inning. No score.
Look at Mike Sosha's lineup for the 145th game of the season for the Angels, and it'll include Brandon Phillips leading things off at second, Mike Trout at center, Justin Upton at left, Albert Pujols at DH, Calhoun at right, Simmons at shortstop, Valpoint at third, Crone at first, and Baldonado once again batting night doing the catching as they uh, take on the 32-year-old right-handed native of Hollywood, Florida, by the name of Mike Fires, making a spot start tonight. Yeah, Mike Fires not overpowering with his fastball throw, a slider, cutter, curve, and change. My go-to is to be successful against him is don't chase that high fastball. He will throw a lot of four-seam fastballs upstairs and a, and a number of multi-run home runs. He's given up some home runs, 31 of them. A couple of those home runs with men on base would really be helpful and give Tyler Skaggs some room to work. 29th game, 28th start for Fires this year. First one to Phillips is in for a strike. Fires has thrown the ball well, too, against the Angels. Two starts this year. 2-0 with a 2.19 ERA. But he will put guys on base via the walk. Just taking advantage of it. That's what the Angels need to do. A one. One ball, one strike. Phillips last night, a multi-hit game. Including the, uh, the ninth inning, one out single. Got the second base safely, but eventually off the base on the Correa tag. He was, would have represented the tying run with Trout at the plays. This one's fouled back. One and two. And especially when you think that the way the inning started with Ben Revere hit that rocket center field and was run down by Marizic in center. First inning double for Phillips last night. It's his first extra base hit. It's joining the Angels. 28th double of the season. One, two, and there's a protective swing. And again, that's one of those high fastballs from Fires. Saw that a lot last night from Justin Verlander. Then he really settled in and threw a really good slider and curveball throughout. This Justin Verlander was excellent last night for the Astros. Which still seems odd to call him a member of the Houston Astros after all those years with the Detroit Tigers. Nine punch outs in eight innings is one hit allowed, one walk. Also hit Trout. Last time the Cleveland Indians lost a game, Verlander was still with the Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good, by the way. Might be the last time they gave up a run, pitching wise. Phillips wrist went out the left. Maven over to try to cut it off. Doesn't get there. Deja vu all over again as Phillips leads off the bottom of the first with a double. Pretty good piece hitting there by Brandon Phillips. Again, picking up another double. Now 29. When Hyundai came for this game today, going to Liam Payne. Strip that down. In other words, bring those pitches down in the strike zone. And that's exactly what Brandon Phillips did. To line that one down in the corner for a double to get in the scoring position for Mike Trout. Chase that high fastball, and it's going to be a tough night against Fires. Bringing his pitches lower part of the strike zone should have success. Breaking ball for a strike on Trout. Mike 0 for 2 last night on board twice via the walk and a hit by pitch. That is out toward left. Not very deep. That's going to fall in there. Phillips will score. Trout on his way to second. Back to back doubles. 1 0 Angels. You know the odd thing about that, Victor, we talked about that in the pregame show how they bunch their, their outfielders into the gaps both left center and right center and that's going to be normally a routine out to left field but the Astros feel and you're going to cut off more hits by being in the gap as compared down the line he runs this fastball in doesn't even get to that barrel of the bat but strong enough to hit that ball and place it perfectly down that left field line where a left fielder most times is going to be camped underneath but because of the way the shift was at in the outfield ends up being an RBI double.
Up to the 278 batting average, 28 home runs, 99 runs batted in. Brandon Phillips a double down that left field side of the outfield. Mike Trout with a double, almost the exact same spot. Double for Trout is 23rd, the RBI is 63rd. So what? You know, when you look at that fastball velocity for Fires, he's going to be 88 to 92. Although a slider, his cut fastball is pretty solid. Curveball and changeup. Evens up the count of two balls, two strikes. Up to the last night, 0 for 3. Angels sent uh, more than three men to the plate last night once. That was in the fourth inning. That's how effective Justin Verlander was through his eight innings. 2 2 pitch. A dribbler toward third. Bregman has to come in on it. Upton is called out at first. Very close play. Sosa will have the guys take a look at it. I'm a little surprised Trout didn't think about going to third base on that ball. Yeah, because as a third baseman coming in, it would have been a difficult throw to come back to second base. Bregman played a lot of shortstop in his career. It looked like he got him. And a lot on that throw. That stride, and then the baseball in the glove as the foot's coming down on the base. Nice play by Bregman. So one out. Trout still at second base. Here's Albert. Had a sitting streak snap last night after going 0 for 3. And you could steal on Fires. He's allowed 18 stolen bases in 20 attempts. He's a longer throwing motion. Trout's trying to time him. Altuve's trying to keep him close at second. See how long that throwing motion he has. That's a little bit longer time than a plate. One one pitch. One and two. Albert four for eighteen in his career against Fires. Phillips Trout back to back doubles to give the Angels the one nothing lead here in the first. But just uh, making contact with pitches in off the plate. I'm able to lay off of those sinkers. Altuve playing in the shift up the middle. Breaking ball got him looking. Two down. Albert doesn't like the call, but it's a strike. The other two pitches that he swung at. We're in off the plate. Take a look at the Astros defensively. Maven, Marisnik, Springer in the outfield from left to right. Bregman, Correa, Altuve, and Guriel from third to first. Stasi behind the dish. And Springer, we saw that arm strength last night getting Brandon Phillips at second base after he came off the base. Five outfield assists. His one error keeps improving as far as the error to totals. A very strong throwing arm and an accurate throwing arm, whether he's playing right or center field. So she's obviously unhappy with somebody. Unless uh, the home plate umpire Corey Blazer was looking into the dugout. I think it was Albert not real happy with the call and it, and it kept escalating as he got back into the dugout. And so she's trying to deflect that away. Want to make sure Albert's in this scheme here tonight.
That's exactly where you're going to try to get fires to throw his pitches in that lower part of the strike zone, especially if you're Cole. One one. And that is ripped out to right field. Springer has to go back on it. It's over his head. One hops the fence. Cole on his way to second. The ball dropped by Springer as Trout scores, and the Halos have a two nothing lead. Three doubles in this first inning. Two nothing lead for the Angels. 21st double, 66 RBI. He got that pitch and was able to turn on it and drove it over Springer's head in right center field. Again, lower part of that strike zone, hard to the plate, 89 miles an hour. You got a better chance against fires as compared to that upper part. And over the head of Springer, looked like he was trying to get himself in position to make that quick throw of the second. A little bit of a fumble, but Cole Calhoun picks up a double. Now it's Anderson Simmons at the plate. He takes ball one. Timbers average down to 279, 14 home runs, 64 runs batted in. Three last night, and he'll hit this one down the line. Hooks foul, breaking ball. About 19% of Fires' pitches are curveballs. He's had a pretty good one going. Brandon Phillips got the offense going tonight with that leadoff double, scored a run. Breaking ball down the line. That is fair. Calhoun coming in to score. Simmons on his way to second. And tell me if you've heard this song before. A double that brings home a run. And it's 3-0 Angels here in the first. Got a couple double-doubles so far in this inning. Back-to-back -back double doubles started with Phillips and Trout now Calhoun and Simmons Another break of ball this time he stayed back on it hooks it right down the third baseline Put that head down on the baseball out in front Gets that double down the line 36 double 65th RBI for Anderson Simmons Just over that bag and down the line So far, the game plan for the hitters against Fires has been pretty good. They have not gone after any elevated pitches. Cole Calhoun talking to Dave Hansen. And a real good swing in that pitch. Lower part of the strike zone and doubled to the wall in right center field. A what? Luis rips one out to right field. Springer's going to watch this one go. Big fly for Luis Balbuena. 5 nothing Halos. Boy, what a swing that was from Luis Balbuena. And a tremendous backflip on that one also. It's our top tier play brought to you by Arco. After four doubles in the inning, got another fastball, lower part of the strike zone, and a no doubter home run. See Fires looking at Luis Valbuena. This ball was crushed, 20th home run. Talk about the need for a multi-run home run. Well, you get one early on here in the first. There was a five-run first for the Halos against the Astros. Brent Strom out to pay a visit. Seven men have come to the plate here in the first inning. Tell you what, this offense has really executed their game plan against Fires. They're tracking the lower part of the strike zone with a lot of success. As we said in the open, uh, two runs on average, not going to get it done against these teams if they're playing on this home. Stannis Crone takes inside.
Fastball in. Give it to Cal. Take a look at the uh, Luis Valbuena bat flip and slow mo, Gooby. Oh, that's fantastic. He got that all that baseball right there. Oh, we just teased you. <laughs> oh, that's not right. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> Five runs. We'll show it to you at some point, folks. It was pretty good. Yeah, it was. A lot of extra base hits in this one, Gooby. Yeah, four doubles and eventually a two run home run for Luis Valbuena. There's the bat flip. In the first, five to be exact. Five nothing Halos. Top of the second. Tyler Skaggs back to work. He threw nine pitches in the first inning, gave up a couple of two ounce singles and nothing more. Guriel, Maben, and Stasi against Skaggs. Yeah, you got to think and have that same mindset. It's a 0 0 game for Tyler Skaggs. There it is, that lower part of the strike zone. Get a lot of ground ball action. Two on count. Guriel had a couple of hits last night, singles. Hitting 290, 17 home runs, 66 runs batted in. We'll shoot this one right to Chrome. Pretty good piece of hitting, trying to go the other way. You see how well he stayed back on that baseball, that it travel deeper in the strike zone, a line drive, but right at CJ Crone. There's Cameron Babin. 229 average this year with nine home runs, 30 runs batted in. Four for 27 since joining the Houston Astros. That's a 148 batting average with uh, three of those four hits, home runs. Well liked by all his teammates with the Angels. Lifted out to shallow right. Two down.
Two quick outs for Tyler. Max Stasi at the plate. Four for 18 this year. Six year old takes down it away. One ball, one strike. It's obviously a fourth round pick by Oakland in 2009. Yuba City High School, Yuba City, California. She's going fastball, change up fastball so far in the sequence. Get some quick outs. Very important for Skaggs. Cuba City just north of Sacramento. 2 1. It's about in that little two seamer. So, a few more of those last two times out. Upstairs, full count. The guy you want to get if you're Skaggs. Marisnik has got some real good swings and numbers against Tyler Skaggs in his career. Swing and a miss. A one, two, three shutdown inning for Skaggs, which includes his first strike out of the night. We'll head to the bottom of the second with the Angels on top. This Friday, the Rangers are in town at 707. Fans in attendance will receive a Rebel Pilot Rally Monkey while supplies last. For more information, go to angels.com. Could be out of here excited about the, oh. uh, the Rebel Pilot Rally Monkey. Oh, no doubt. 9 1 and 2 for the Angels here in the second. Donato pops up the first pitch to shallow right. Springer's playing shallow, comes in. One pitch, one out. Top of the order coming up now at Brandon Phillips. Angels with five extra base hits in the first. Four doubles and a home run. Last time the Angels had four or more doubles in the first inning was June 19, 1977 at Milwaukee. Long time ago then. Long time ago. One of those doubles, Cole Calhoun ripped that one and one hopped the wall in right center field. Brandon Phillips with a double leading off the game. Again, you see the outfielders for the Astros bunching up in those alleys in the outfield. A lot of room down in the corners once again. You see right here, and then you got it in center, and you got there in a lot of room in each corner to be able to hit that ball down the line.
Just went back to that game. June 19th, 1977. If someone asked me on Twitter who were the, the guys that hit the doubles, I'll tell you here in a second. Keep you in suspense. One, two. Watch out. That sailed up and in. Two balls, two strikes. Phillips didn't like that pitch. Especially when you're tracking and break a ball away the pitch before. Up and in with a fastball, way up and in. That's down the line and just foul. All right, so June 19, 1977, Bobby Bonds off Moose Haas, who did not record it out. Mario Guerrero, Ron Jackson, Gil Flores. All in the first inning. Wow. 40 years ago. Dave Chalk added one later on, and Bobby Bonds had a triple as well in that game. Foul back. Count remains at two balls, two strikes. He's got Bueno with a mammoth two run home run. Two down. Now it's time for Tools to Retreat, brought to you by Ram Trucks. Talk about adjustments against fires tonight. Earlier this season, you see that cold zone as far as upper part of the strike zone with his four-seam fastball. And he got the Angels swing at that pitch upstairs quite a bit earlier this season. But tonight, different game plan. Lower part of the strike zone and some damage done. Double by Calhoun. Two-run home run by Valbuena on pitches in the lower part of the strike zone against fires. The good adjustment by the hitters so far. See that pitch upstairs. That's the pitch he's been successful against Trout and pitchers in general. We saw that last night for the most part, even though he did walk and hit Trout. Verlander staying upstairs against Mike Trout. Oh, two. Back upstairs again. Reason why you see pitchers try to do that. When you look at the zones in which you can get Trout out is that upper part of the strike. So anything below that upper part has been hit hard everywhere. Whether it's a fastball or secondary pitch. But when you look at those numbers, he hasn't chased a lot of those pitches upstairs. But when he has, he's not made that consistent contact we're used to seeing in the lower part of the strike zone for Trout. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Got to foul it out of play. Two quick outs for Fires. You had Maldonado on one pitch, a fly ball to right. Strike out of Phillips. And he'll strike out Trout. So a 1 2 3 inning for Fires as he bounces back. We'll head to the third. The Angels leading at 5 nothing.
Jags will face nine one and two in Marisnik Springer and Bregman. He'll score five times in the first. Four doubles and a home run by Luis Valbuena. Skaggs a one two three second including a strikeout. Good break of ball to throw a strike with that pitch. Mentioned Marisnik three for three in his career versus Skaggs. 240 average this season, getting the start in center tonight. Behind at 0 and 2. Notice right there before that pitch was thrown, Martin Maldonado was tapping his glove. That wasn't to try to distract the hitter. It's more to give Balbuena an idea that that might be hit his way on a breaking ball down and in. Popped up, shallow right, long run for everybody. And that's going to fall in there perfectly. And then dropped by Cron. He'll throw to second and try to get Marista. Quick tag and out at second base. He, he, hurt like he jammed his hand in there too. They'll probably take a look at this play also. As AJ Hinch does quite a bit. Now scorer looking in and calling into the clubhouse. Crone, the quick throw. Scoop and then tag. Don't know if that hand got in there. Looks like the hand came off for a second and they there. still had the tag on yeah. them all the way through anyhow. Yeah, the clock has expired. Let's move along now. I, I don't know why the crew chief has to walk toward the dugout when the clock has zero on it. See that tag before that hand got in anyhow. And then the hand off the bag, just enough, but it's still the tag was still on him. Another quick tag and scoop by Anderson Simmons. Dude, I don't know. I don't know that his hand came off or if he even got him the first time. Doesn't matter now. No. Yep. Well, you know, with A.J. Hinch and the Astros, they challenged pretty much every. I thought he still got him on the chest before that hand got in there. Cole's getting his exercise in in right field today. Marisnik is credited with a single, by the way. And it was a 3 6 put out at second. Different look on that high fastball. Especially if he's trying to track of that lower part of the strike zone in his curveball. Chopper toward third, Valbuena. Two hops. Two down. Boy, got a lot on that throw to get Springer, who runs out very hard. Every ball hit on the ground in that infield. Tyler Skaggs getting out with that breaking ball has been effective so far. And even this season, when you look at the numbers against his fastball, 310 batting average against his fastball this season with eight home runs allowed, but just 223 versus his curveball and changeup with one home run allowed. Bregman grounded out his first time up.
Three balls, no strikes without Tuve on deck. There's a strike. I just want to try that little arm side fastball, keep it down, lower part of the strike zone, force Bregman hit the ball on the ground here. Jab it out to center. Another one, two, three frame for Skaggs. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Halo's up five nothing. Then on Fox, you'll see the Ohio State Buckeyes take on Army, followed by the rematch 11 years in the making as Texas and USC meet for the first time since the classic 06 Rose Bowl. College football on FS1 at Fox, every game is everything. That was Vince Young for Texas. Derek Fisher takes over in left field. Jake marismic has been lifted from this game. The Maven moves from left over to center. Takes a fastball right down the pipe for a strike. Upton, Pujols, Calhoun. Coming up against Mike Fires at a 1 2 3 second, including two punch outs. No balls, two strikes. Still this one RBI shy of 100 for the season for Justin Upton. Tried to run that fastball upstairs. Good take from Upton. Fastball got him looking. Three consecutive strikeouts for Fires, one down. Four strikeouts overall. Albert, one of them, it happened in the first. Chasing the change up, no balls, two strikes. Mm -hmm. 
Albert shoots one out to right field. Springer comes in. Two down. Hit well the other way by Pull Holes. Springer dealing with a bank of lights. That ball hit on the line like that as an outfielder. Sometimes difficult to track right away. He was able to do so. But still a good swing from Albert. Six straight retired since the home run by Valbuena. Here's Cole. RBI double in the first. Meanwhile, at Target Field in uh, Minnesota, Twins and Padres tied at one at the bottom of the eighth inning. The Yankees won today, defeated Tampa Bay 3 2. Baltimore won as they uh, took care of Toronto. Texas trailing Seattle 8 1. That game's the bottom of the eighth in Arlington. Cole Bunning one on the third base side. Put that in your back pocket. That's a two out knock. They're going to give it to you. Take it. Yep. Especially that first pitch to be able to do that. See where the shift at is where the that whole left side of the infield completely wide open for Cole Calhoun. Would not be surprised if you see Cole on the move. Like I said, you can steal against fires. Five stolen baseman caught once. Simmons and RBI double down the left field line. Takes upstairs. The double for uh, Andrelton is 36th of the year. Pick up his 65th run batted in. Career highs in both categories. That's out toward left field. Fisher has a beat on this one as he backs up. Calls it in for the third out. Three complete here at the big A. The Angels still up 5 nothing. Next night on Tuesday, September 19th, the Cleveland Indians are in town. Fans in attendance will receive a Ducks Night beanie. While supplies last, go to uh, angels.com for more information on Ducks Night. Quack, quack. Tyler Skanks through three innings. Three hits, one strikeout. Three innings, 34 pitches for Skaggs. Altuve, a bunch single in the first. Eventually stranded at third base, so he's one for one. Gray on deck, then Gaddis. To be five for 13 in his career versus Skaggs. Yeah. 
slightly off balance on that swing, a 2-0 swing. Two on pitch. It's fouled back to a two. Breaking ball, ground to second. Slow enough to get out to but out in front, gets a ground ball out. Nice job coming back into that count and getting a quick out to be behind 2 0 against Altuve. And that's the key against Altuve. You don't stay slow and then go all hard fastballs. You got to change it up, and that's exactly what, even though that pitch was elevated. 77 mile an hour curveball got him out in front and he hit that ground ball right to second base. Correa with the base hit up the middle, one for one. Two one. This is back towards second. In on the hands, just fastball away, fastball in. Rick Ray may have been sitting on a breaking ball or a fastball away. Enough on that inside part of the plate to jam him. Back to back ground ball outs to Phillips at second. Two outs for Evan Gaddis. Hit a fly ball to right field the first. One one. Forty five pitches so far. Dead forty six. As Cole comes in, calls for it. Smooth sailing thus far for Tyler Skaggs through four innings. The Angels with a 5 0 lead as we head to the bottom of the frame.
brought to you by Subaru. Love it out there. Find it in the all-new 2018 Subaru Crosstrek. And by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HeffINS.com. Halo's up 5 nothing, scoring five times the first four doubles and a home run. The only scoring so far in this game. Luis Valbuena will lead things off. It's the bottom third of the order. And Fires throws a pitch behind Valbuena. I knew that was going to happen because he stared him all the way down. That's unfortunate for Mike Sosha to get a warning there on a pitch up and in on Luis Valbuena. After that bat flip, Fires looked at Valbuena all the way down the line. Former teammates of Valbuena, John, with some guys in the dugout. Ah, uh, that's that's tired is what yeah, that is. Exactly. And maybe don't give up home runs, you wouldn't have to worry about it. 32 on the season allowed by Fires. And that's ripped to right field. That's the best way to come back that. Exactly. Pay it back. Halfway through the cycle. And staring into the dugout. Good for Luis. Yes. I mean, that's a, that's a dangerous pitch up and in over your head. It hits the backstop in the air. Well, he stayed back, and he got this pitch belt high. And another good swing and bat flip from Luis Valbuena. Should have bat flipped that into the dugout. Yes. <laughs> But you're right, I agree with you. It's pretty tired that both benches get worn yeah. there. Yeah. Crone grounded out in the first. A good count to do some damage here for CJ Crone. Well, there's no worse feeling when you're a pitcher. You throw a purpose pitch, and then the very next pitch is hit hard. And that's exactly what you want to do as a hitter, and that's exactly what Luis Valbuena did. He rocketed that ball into that corner for a double. Talk about responding to a pitch. Did so. And the thing that's unfortunate when you see both benches worn like that, now it's up to the umpire's discretion. If you throw a fastball in, if he feels there's a purpose behind it, so now you can be thrown out of the game for a fastball in. You're trying to establish a fastball in to go away and get it out. Full count. Yeah, I mean, it's subject to interpretation by the home plate umpire. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some have a better understanding of what's intended. I think we saw the, uh, the Yankees were involved in one of those not that long ago where that, that came into play. Can't remember the team they were playing, but it was a situation, same thing. 3-2, and he walked him. Double followed by the walk. First free pass issued by Fires. And it'll bring up Martin Maldonado. I mean, you got to feel pretty confident about uh, your stuff, especially when you've just gone two innings of really keeping things at bay after giving up five runs in the first why wake a sleeping dog perhaps yeah. you know, what if this snowballs on you all exactly of a sudden? all of a sudden you're you're don't you're down by five it seems like a lot but when you're facing the tough toughest team as far as run scored and, and batting average in Houston you still you you feel like you're part of a game all of a sudden now you got two runners on chance to expand the lead and take that threat away from them coming back in the game Corner infielders playing in, waiting for the sacrifice, and the first one misses upstairs. Maldonado saw one pitch in his second inning at bat, hit a fly ball to right. Ball. 
Then on the third base side, Bregman bobbles the ball. They're going to get the out first. Sacrifice advances to Valpoint at the third and Crone to second. Brandon Phillips coming to the plate. And now it's time for in the driver's seat brought to you by the new 2017 Kia Sorento. And what Brandon Phillips has done in his very good career so far, one of five second basemen ever with 2,000 hits, 200 home runs, 200 steals. When you look at the other names, they're all Hall of Famers. Joe Morgan, Ryan Sandberg, Craig Biggio, Roberto Alomar, all enshrined in Cooperstown. And the Phillips, outstanding career so far. Starting to swing the bat very well now at home here at the Big A. Infield in. One out, runners at second and third. Phillips one for two. We'll take downstairs. Double and a strikeout for Phillips. These are the moments where Brandon Phillips throughout his whole career has excelled in these situational type hitting situations. He can hit the ball very well the other way. He's going to try to get a pitch that he can hit in the air deep enough to score Valbuena. Handles the bat well. Phillips leads one out to shallow center field. That's going to fall in there. Valbuena will score. Here comes Krohn. He's going to score easily. Two RBI single for Brandon Phillips, seven nothing Angels. Yeah. A great way to respond after a double, a walk, a sack bunt, and then a little flare into the outfield, scoring two for Brandon Phillips. Two for three in the game for Phillips. Again, he's looking to try to lift the baseball. You can see by that swing, and he didn't necessarily square that up, but he's trying to get that ball in the air with the infield in. It does so. Situational hitting, excellent once again for Brandon Phillips. Travel the double and an RBI in the first, also scored a run, struck out in the second as the Astros have action in their bullpen. Point warming up. Fires who was so good this season against the Angels, not so tonight. Crowd shoots one out to center field. May have been coming in on him. That falls in there. He kind of gives up on it. That's a great read by yeah. Phillips. We've seen that uh, this year from Cam. Maybe he'll just pull up on baseballs late. I don't know if it's a bad read, but another single in this inning. Runners at first and third. But a great read by Phillips. He saw that baseball down. You see him get his secondary lead. He says right away, I'm going to see that baseball down. I'm going to get the third. Try to add on against the Astros as Trout. Two for three in this game. It really hasn't squared up a baseball yet. Now a great opportunity now for Justin Upton to get to that century mark in RBI. One away. Brent Strom, the pitching coach, is coming out. Hoyt's been loosening, so he's ready to go. Breaking ball to Upton misses. Justin grounded out of the first inning, struck out looking at the third.
to it all. Could be Fire's last batter right here, one way or the other. Just missed a pretty good pitch to drive. It's two at one. Phillips standing at third base, Trout at first. Seven nothing Angels here, the fourth. Looked like he went around. Two two. Again, to chase that high fastball. The hitters have been pretty solid as far as not chasing that high fastball tonight. Definitely crossed the plate on that one. 38 RBI last 39 games for Justin Upton. Trying to pick up at least another RBI here. Out on the move and up to fouls it off, protecting them. He's trying to stay alive in that bat after a high fastball through that slow curveball and just fouled it off. Big jump for Trout. 20 stolen bases on the season. Upton takes a fastball called strike three. Two down. Had some issues against Fires in those three plate appearances so far tonight. And Albert coming up now. Strike out a fly ball to right for Pujols. Takes a breaking ball inside. He's pitched Albert inside a lot in this game. Whether it's a break a ball or fastball or even his changeup. Oh, back inside again. Ground ball to the right side. That'll sneak through for a base hit. Phillips will score. Travel head to third. Eight nothing Angels. Albert with his 95th run batted in. And the proverbial nail in the coffin for Mike Fires, who started this inning by firing a baseball behind the head of Luis Valbuena. It didn't quite work out in his favor here in the fourth inning, Gooby. Yeah, that's the thing. You, you mentioned he's been throwing the ball well the last couple of innings, and all of a sudden, that high fastball back to the backstop. Angels hitters came right back to life after that pitch. 8-0 lead for the Angels over the Astros. Pitching change with two outs in the fourth.
very, very well against the Angels this season prior to this game, but not so tonight with eight earned runs and three and two thirds. If you look at our Carl's Camp replay, it's certainly worthy of it with the swings from Luis Albuena against Fires. First, a two run home run that Fires didn't like that bat flip, and then the next at bat, Fires it right over the head of Luis Albuena, who follows it right back up with a double down the right field line, an even better bat flip on that one, and eventually scores the sixth run of the game after doubling to start this inning against Fires, who has struggled tonight trying to command that upper part of the strike zone. A lot of mistakes downstairs. Pitching change with runners at first and third and two outs. James Hoyt coming on for the 40th time this year. 1 0 with a 4.84 ERA. 62 strikeouts, 11 walks, and 44 plus innings. Yeah, fastball is 91 to 95 with a sharp slider and changeup. He'll face Cole Calhoun. Two for two tonight with a double, a single, and RBI to run scored. Trout standing at third, Pools at first. Hey, nice catch with the glove over the railing. Well, snow cone action. Yes. But the play was made. Three infielders on the right side. Bregman now moves back to the shortstop position, so Trout can take a huge lead. And third base. Anything in the dirt, he can score easily. You don't have to worry about any back pick at all at third. Two balls, two strikes. Ten hits for the Angels with two outs here in the fourth inning. What is two hits last night to one off Justin Verlander in eight shutout innings. Two two Cole strikes out swinging on a hard breaking ball and the inning comes to an end the Angels. The eight men of the plate score three times. It all started with Luis Balbuena quieting the Astros. <laughs> Perfect swing right down that right field line with the double. And Brandon Phillips, situational hitting, drives in two. Angels up, eight nothing.
Saturday, Texas Rangers in town. Remember, that's a 6 p.m. start. Enjoy a post-game Nick Jonas concert presented by Strikeout Slavery. For information and tickets, just go to angels.com. As the Angels are on top here, 8-0, we begin the fifth inning. Tyler Skaggs, stellar thus far. Just 46 pitches through his first four innings, 28 for strikes. He's thrown nine in the first, 12 in the second, 13 in the third, 12 in the fourth. So uh, right where you'd like him. One strikeout, no walks, three hits allowed. Again, so far, it looks like he keep, he's keeping that mindset. It's a 0-0 game, which is important. Even though you have a pretty good-sized lead right now, you still pitch exactly the same as far as what you tried and talked about before you went out to the bullpen to warm up. Guriel, Maben, and Stasi here in the fifth inning for Houston. And meanwhile, in target field, still 1-1 game. The game now the bottom of the ninth inning. Padres and the Twins. The Padres had a couple guys on in the ninth inning with just one out but failed to score. Seattle ended up defeating Texas 8-1. Seattle a game and a half behind the Angels. Kansas City lost today. As did Texas, which was mentioned. Tampa Bay ended up losing. Three to two to the Yankees. Now, Victor, we were talking about this in the in the pregame show. This doesn't seem like any team's capable really of separating himself from the rest as far as the wild card, especially the second wild card. Seem like it's going to be that way all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. Just look at the current standings. Breaking ball almost got to chase it. A good bite. Good tilt to that breaking ball tonight. Pretty close to being a strike on that pitch. Full count. Walked him. Lead off man on board via the free pass. Brings up Maven with a fly ball to right. There's second inning at bat. Tyler Skagg has had eight ground ball double plays turned behind him this season. And Maven has hit into 12 of them. Oh, no foul back ball on a strike Guriel over at first base the lead off walk and a 1 1 count on Maven. Good one. It's pretty close to a swing there. See if he indeed crossed the plate and easily crossed the plate for it should have been a strike.
2 2 now. Upstairs, full count. Back to back hitters to start this inning. Taylor's gone to a 3 2 count. Haven shoots it out to center field, chasing Trout back at the track. Will make the catch. One down. Hit One place well. to hit it. Hit, hit, night. hit pretty well there by Maven, a lower pitch. Trout able to run that one down just in front of the wall. Visit unless he saw something. Max Stasi at the plate. Gary Ellen first with one out. Thirty eight career games for Stasi. Fifth year. Now ball is short. Seven to the backhand. That'll turn two. That's exactly what Charles Nagy said. Yeah. Come back, get a double play ball, one pitch. Try, try to, I dare you. <laughs> one to the bottom of the fifth. Inning. Angels up eight nothing. Up 8 nothing here at the bottom of the fifth inning. Angelton Simmons to lead things off for the Angels. James Hoyt's back out for the fifth inning. Tyler Skaggs talking to Joe with Mike Sosian. I think that has something more to do with the uh, walking Yuli Gurriel 8 nothing in the top of the fifth inning. Yeah, that's a conversation right now where Mike Sosian say go out and attack the strike zone. And I think what it comes down to, too, and even though we'll talk about that more even tomorrow when the, the starter on Friday it's going to be a bullpen game so you want to make sure especially with this lead and what you've done so far get into that seventh maybe even eighth inning to be able to give the bullpen a little bit of a rest because it's going to be used a lot on Friday they went back to back hitters to start the fifth on Guriel and Maven to three two counts especially and, and I know in no one so he went up to say do you realize how good your stuff is tonight go right after him I don't care what they're hitting as a team. You're throwing the ball exceptionally well. Just keep going and attacking and getting quick outs. Ball on a strike on Simmons, who had an RBI double in the first. Fly ball to left in the third.
Out to center field. Maven's there. One away. So far in the game, a home run and a double. Two runs scored, two RBI for Luis Valbuena against his former team. 20 home runs now on the season with that big fly in the first inning. Boy, he has a pretty sharp slider. Certainly a lot of room on that left side of the infield to punch a base hit that way if you're Valbuena. Popped up. Bregman. Moves over. At least thought it was foul. Out of play. Started running late. Two down. So it'll bring up Crone. CJ a ground down at a walk. He's also scored a run. Three hits for Houston, ten for the Angels. Five runs in the first, three in the fourth. So it what? Pretty good running action on the fastball. You think with the fastball up and in right now, Crone will get something either a fastball or a slider away. Not that slider, but it's a little bit below the strike zone. Maldonado on deck. And the walk. Second. Picked up by Crone tonight. Haven't done that a whole lot this year. 17 on the season. So two out walk brings up the number nine hitter, Martin Maldonado. Good fly ball to right field in the second. A sacrifice punt in the fourth. So he's 0 for 1. Breaking ball queued out the left field, a base hit. So two on, two outs. And Phillips coming to the plate. He's already had a solid game already for Brandon Phillips. Two hits, a couple runs scored, a couple RBI himself. Already got a Brandon Phillips fan here. Yes, indeed. Well, they sure that little. 
graphic earlier about what he has done in his career. One of only five second basemen ever with 2,000 plus hits, 200 home runs, and 200 steals. The other four are in the Hall of Fame. He's had a very good career. Back and to back two out games for Phillips. And four gold gloves to boot. Going at second, Maldonado at first. And just one of two active players with those offensive numbers playing any position. Carlos Beltran, the other. A very impressive company for Brandon Phillips. Breaking ball rolled over to the left side. Bregman gloves it, goes to second base, and they force out Maldonado to end the fifth. Five of the books here at the Big A. Halos up 8 nothing. Top of the sixth here at the Big A. The Angels up by the score of eight to nothing. Offense uh, has come to life. We talked about it in the open that uh, as far as this homestand is concerned with the Astros, Rangers, and then the Seattle, probably not the Seattle Mariners, the uh, Cleveland Indians coming into town. Seattle at the back end, the last homestand of the year. Offense needed to step up. Now Mike Fires made his spot start. He's pitched well against the Angels this year. Tonight they had his number. I think the game plan was very good. They brought some pitches down in the strike zone. Really good swings. Ten hits against Fires in this game in his three and two-thirds innings pitch. And you knew you had to swing the bat well. When you're play facing the Astros, they're at the tops as far as almost every single offensive category. So good swings throughout and a solid effort so far from Tyler Skaggs following up on that great effort last night by Garrett Richards. Derek Fisher, first plate appearance for him. He took over for Jake Marisnik, who jammed his thumb. Trying to stretch a single into a double to the third inning. Fisher 211 batting average in 38 games. Four home runs, 13 runs batted in. Almost got him to chase that breaking ball. One ball, one strike. One and two. So a couple of fastballs, four seamers upstairs against Fisher. Wonderful try to get him to chase a breakable out of the strike zone this time. Now with two strikes on him. Astros first round pick out of the University of Virginia back in 2014. Supplemental first round. Two two.
Down goes Fisher swinging at the breaking pitch. Second strikeout for Skaggs on the night. One down. Tony might go with that pitch. The pitch before just missed with a fastball. That forced Fisher to expand his strike zone and chase this break of ball for a strikeout. Second of the game for Skaggs. Stayed on top. Very good tilt to that break of ball to get a swing and miss. Spring of the leadoff man 0 for 2. Fly ball to left, the ground ball to third. That's driven out the left field. Up to has got to go back on it. Two down. Twins have won it in a walk off in the bottom of the 10th. Eddie Rosario, a two run shot. The Twins continue to roll. Angels will need a victory today to remain two back. Bregman takes a strike. Minnesota down 76 and 69 on the season. It was a team that lost over 100 games last year. Paul Molitor has done a real good job of convincing these young players that they have the chance to have the talent to get into the postseason. Oh, two. Astros have confirmed that Marisnik left the game with a right thumb injury, which is what we. Suppose was the reason since he was shaking his right hand and thumb area as he walked off the field when he got called out at second. One, two. Got him looking. One, two, three, six, then including a couple strikeouts for Skaggs. Dealing tonight against the Houston Astros. Halo's up eight nothing. Angels baseball on Fox Sports West is being brought to you by Hyundai. There's no better time to buy a new Hyundai than now. See your local Hyundai dealer or visit buyhyundai.com. By Fios by Frontier. Get the best price ever on Fios TV, internet, and voice by Frontier. Visit FiosByFrontier.com today. The Angels lead at eight nothing as we begin the bottom of the sixth inning. New pitcher on for the uh, Houston Astros. Tyler Clipper takes over for James Hoyt. Ended up going an inning in a third. One strikeout, one hit, one walk. This will be the 62nd overall game between the Yankees 
White Sox and Astros for Clipper. Two and eight and a 5.13 ERA. And on overpowering with his fastball, through a split and a changeup along with the fastball, 89 93 range in breaking ball. Trout to lead things off. And he'll rip one out the left field. The fish is right there. One away. Trout two for four with that line out. Who's up to who's over three? He struggled against Mike Fires. One ground out, two strikeouts looking. That is out toward left field. The towering shot chasing Fisher back at the warning track. At the wall, gone. Big fly for Justin Upton. First as an angel. And his 100th run batted into the season makes it 9 nothing Angels. He yeah, was able to get those arms extended. 29th home run, 100 RBI go along with his 40 doubles. So 69 extra base hits this season for Justin Upton. Fastball hard of the plate. And the Angels have really hit Clippard hard this season. Another home run allowed. And that one gets out. Century mark as far as RBI right by that 390 sign way out. Justin Upton. Get some high fives, get into that dugout. It's about time, Upton. Home run number 250. Yeah. Albert one for three with an RBI single. Walks into the dugout. Yeah. Hey, did I not just hit a home run? My 100th RBI of the season. Dito Evil laughing there, just waiting around who is going to be the first at the end of the attack. <laughs> Cal remains at 0 2. Albert mentioned the RBI in the fourth inning. Now with 95 runs batted into the season. Thirty ninth RBI in forty games for Upton. Ground ball left side. Bregman's got it. Two down. Call hits one sharply toward second. Tuve from shallow right. Throws him out. And the sixth is in the books. The Angels had a run on Justin Upton's first home run. As an Angels, 250th of his career. Also his 100th RBI of the season. You're talking belt high, inner part of the plate now, way out to left center field for Jay Up.
Network West is being brought to you by the Ram Rebel. Make the most of your summer at the Ram Summer Clearance Event going on now. Top of the seventh here at the Big A. Tyler Skaggs has been stellar. He's allowed three hits, has himself a 9 0 lead. That lead got extended courtesy of Justin Upton's home run. Sixth inning. They sell two of a career. Gaddis. Actually, it looks like we're going to get a uh, pinch hitter. Altuve is out. J.D. Davis take over for Altuve. He ends up going one for two with a bunt base hit. Davis a 250 average through 18 games. Four doubles, four home runs, seven runs batted in. Correa's on deck. Gaddis to follow, assuming uh, no other changes. Fastball that arm side success throughout this game for Tyler Skaggs. 92. Still very manageable as far as his pitch count. The 74 45 of them strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Good pitch in on the hands. An effective pitching inside also. Including Jim and Correa. Last at bat. Who's on deck right now. Missed up and away. Full count. Three, two. Swing and a miss. Down goes Davis. One down. Strikeout number four. We talked about go to's as far as Skaggs to be successful tonight. That arm side fastball, painting that outside corner 92 throughout this game, even 93. Keeping the hitters off balance, pitching away a little bit off that plate, but then setting that big breaking ball with that great tilt to that pitch tonight. Tyler Skaggs on his game, six and a third so far of dominant pitching for Tyler Skaggs. Just the second time since August the 11th, an Angel starting pitcher has reached the seventh inning. Correa takes a strike. Parker Bridwell worked seven on August 25th. These type of starts have been few and far between for this ball club. Correa one for two with a base hit. I think when you set the tone like Garrett Richards did last night. Going five innings of very good baseball. No walks, four punch outs. 63 pitches thrown for Richards. That's what you want to do. You want to see that from your starting staff each day. You want to be better than the guy who started the night before. Friendly competition. Bridwell, Heaney, Richards. Heaney played some catch today. Still. Not determined if he's going to pitch any more of the season. Two balls, two strikes. 
Very well coming off a very good start himself last time out had struggled two times in a row against Oakland. We pitching on Saturday. Ground ball down the line that is foul. And the Angels 14 and 2 in Parker Bridwell starts this season. The youngster has been very, very good. Called strike three. Inside part of the plate, two down. Paints that corner on the glove side fastball. Right on that inside part of the plate, crossing the front of that plate. Freezes Correa. He jammed them at last at bat on a fastball and a weak ground ball the second. This time takes that for a call third strike. Ground ball over to third. Stretch time here at the big A. Nine nothing Angels. Baseball break. It's all about the Cleveland Indians and what they did today. 21 straight wins that win today against the Tigers. They've outscored their opponents during this stretch 139 to 35 and an ERA 1.57. Cubs with 21 straight. The all time record. New York Giants back in 1916, 26 straight. They had a tie in the middle of that, and all those games were home games at the Polo Grounds. And the big story around the majors is how they were able to do so. Roberto Perez, 95 mile an hour fastball on an 0-2 pitch. That's when you know everything is going well. And Allen able to close this one out on a line drive out to Chisinau out in the outfield as Cleveland 21 straight, a new American League record for consecutive wins for the Cleveland Indians who will be in town next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tony Sip in the game, his 41st game, ERA, just under six and a half this season for the Astros. And by the way, that's the new record. Yes. If there's a tie in there, that's not consecutive wins. 
Sorry. Yeah, I mean, and, and they've beaten a lot of really good teams during this stretch when you think about it. Including, I think it all started with three straight shutouts against the Royals. Boston and the Yankees in that group there for 21 straight for Cleveland. Pennington strikes out as the pinch hitter. One away. Tyler Skaggs, seven very good innings pits, shutout baseball. Andrew Salas warming up. See Maldonado with his arm around Tyler Skaggs. Maldonado did a great job of working with him throughout the entire game. Back to back solid starts, 85 pitches thrown for Skaggs. Over to first. Two down. Tyler White, the new first baseman. Tony Kemp, the new center fielder, moving Mabin over to right field. Wholesale changes for the Strohs here. Down nine, nothing in the seventh. And maybe playing all three outfield positions like he did when he was a member of the Angels, starting in all three outfield positions this season. Here he is in right field. Carl Dope for one with two walks. Three out. Three and one. Full count on Crow. And out of Salas getting ready for the Angels. He'll pitch the eighth. 3 2. Crone shoots one out to right field. Hit well. Maven going back. And that's over his head. Ball hits his body. And Crone is on his way to second with a two out double. 14th double the season for Crone. You know what? I think I think he's got a chance at a triple if that ball doesn't hit Maven. Yeah. Because he went back to the wall, not anticipating that ball carrying as far as it did. Down and got that low pitch, drives it off the wall. This hits the body and stays close enough to prevent Crone from picking up his second triple of the season. Ends up his 14th double. Carlos Perez will pinch it here for Maldonado. Our team finishes the night going one for two with a single and a sacrifice bunt. Carlos takes a strike. Carlos, a former Astro himself. One for 14 this year. Oh, a two. Bouncer toward third. 
J.D. Davis across the diamond, and the Angels are done here in the seventh. We head to the eighth inning. Nine nothing Angels. have come alive in game number two. Angels 9-0 over the Astros as we head to the top of the eighth inning. Ken French back with you. Don't forget following the game. It's Angels Live presented by your SoCal Mazda dealers. With myself, Jose Moda, Tim Salmon, and Alex Curry. Certainly uh, a focus tonight will be Tyler Skaggs looking for his first win since coming off the disabled list and he is well on his way. Seven shutout innings here tonight. Plenty of run support. We'll show you a five run first inning capped by a two run homer by Luis Valbuena. Justin Upton also homered for the first time as an angel. We'll take a look around the league, bring you scores and highlights as they pertain to the American League wild card race. That and much more happens on the post game show as Fernando Salas takes the hill for the top of the eighth, guys. Thanks a lot, Frenchy. And here in the eighth inning, Fernando will be uh, facing White, Maven, and Stasi. Six, seven, and eight for Houston. So far with the Angels, one and zero, oh, and a five and a third innings. One hit, one earned run for Salas. Takes over for Tyler Skaggs. Went seven tonight. Seven very good innings. It's White lines one over the outstretched glove of Al Buena into the left field corner. He's on his way to second with a leadoff double. Getting back to Tyler Skaggs, seven innings, five strikeouts, one walk, three hits allowed. And great command throughout. Did not waste any pitches pretty much the entire game. So that's now 13 innings pitch, his last two starts for Skaggs. The importance of be able to not only quality innings, but deep in the game. And that's exactly what Tyler Skaggs did tonight. Halos with a, a bunch of changes. I'll give you that here in just a second. First one to Maven, who's down and away. Ben Revere takes over and left. Eric Young Jr.'s in center. Shane Robinson in right, so new outfield for the Angels. Cliff Pennington stays in the game at shortstop. Caleb Coward takes over at second. And Carlos Perez, who pinch hit for Martin Maldonado, stays in the game. He's behind the dish. Maven twice has hit a fly ball out, so he's over two. Starting uh, left fielder moved to uh, center when Marisnik got hurt. Now in right. Ground ball up the middle. Pennington to his left. Dug out by Crow. One out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Los Angeles Angels. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. It's a good play by Cliff up the middle. Got a lot on that throw to get Maven at first base. Especially when you've been sitting the whole game to be able to go and show some pretty good range and then that good throw. Solid play by Pennington. White standing at third base. Max Stasi at the plate. 0 for 2 tonight with a strikeout and a double play ball. 
Lifted out to center. Deep enough to score one. Sack fly for Stasi. Astros get on the board. It's nine to one. Two down of the bases clear now. Just the second run that Fernando Salas has allowed. We're in that angel uniform again. Fisher came on and took over left field when Marisnik was taken out of the game's 0 for 1. Struck out. There's one only at bat in the sixth. Lifted out toward right center. Eric Young Jr. Moving over. And the eighth is in the books. Astros get on the board for the Angels. Taking it to the Strohs tonight. It's 9 to 1. Different than the one we saw last night, Gooby, and that's a, that's a good thing since the Angels are up nine to one here in the bottom of the eighth. A hit for every single batter in that lineup, starting lineup tonight, including four with two hits. Some balance throughout and some very good swings, including four doubles and a home run in the first inning alone for the Halos tonight. Raymin Goudouin, the left hander, on the relief to replace Tony Sip. Let a go. Uh, Scoreless inning of relief, allowing one hit to C.J. Crone. Juan, 25-year-old from San Pedro de Macorís in the Dominican Republic, at one time the shortstop capital of the world. This will be his 19th Major League game, and he has been erratic. Yeah, Juan has a good fastball, though. It's 93-98 slider. 11 walks, 12 strikeouts, and 13 and two-third innings. Junior fighting it down the line and just goes foul. He's really did a nice job wearing that angel uniform, a spark plug, especially filled in when Mike Trout was injured.
EY goes down, swinging one away. It's a pretty good breaking ball. And going back to my Hyundai key for this game, strip that down. They did a very, very good job. You look back at the game against like Fires as far as bringing those pitches down in the strike zone, not chase it upstairs like they did the night before against Justin Verlander, chasing that four seam fastball. Good approaches and good game plans throughout for the Angels hitters against the Astros tonight. Caleb Gower. Took over defensively at second base. 231 average this year. Five doubles, a triple, three home runs, 11 runs batted in. Two for 14 from the right side. Sharp breaking ball. No struggles throwing strikes tonight. Back to back strikeouts for good one. Two outs. And a great tilt to that slider he has. Good one. Especially his fastballs solid and around the strike zone. All seven pitches strike so far. Ben Revere took over and left for Justin Upton. 267 on the year. Pinch hit last night, lined out to center. And that ended up being a big play. If you get Ben Revere with his speed on base, he hit the ball very well. Changes the whole complexion of that ninth inning. Bear shoots one out to left center, and that's exactly where Kemp was playing in a 1 2 3 9. Blood at the bottom of the frame with the Angels on top. Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is being brought to you by the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica, the new benchmark of minivans. Test drive one at your local Chrysler dealership today. By Mercury Insurance, we're on a mission to save you money. Log on to MercuryInsurance.com to get a fast, free quote and see how much you can save. Top of the ninth here at the Big A, the Angels looking to even up the series in a game of peace, lead it 9-1. And Eduardo Paredes takes over on the mound. Replacing Fernando Salas, who gave up a run on one hit, his one inning of work. And Eduardo will work the uh, the ninth. One of eight pitchers for the Angels with a save this season. Thirteenth game, 0-1 and 3.24 ERA. 
Tony Kemp will lead things off. Bregman and then J.D. Davis. Two balls and a strike. Kemp to seven games this year at the major league level. Three for 17. Two two. Went around. One down. That hold up on that high fastball gets a swing and miss. Hey, watch the drive to the pennant with MLB.tv every night on every device. Watch every out of market regular season game live. Plus, get a free subscription to App App Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Go to MLB.tv for the details. Bregman tonight 0 for 3. Off speed pitch misses. It's 1 1. Davis on deck. Fragment pulls one foul. Still a one two count. Score holes. Skaggs picks up his second win. Seven innings, three hits, five strikeouts. Back to back, really good starts from a starter from Garrett Richards. Now Tyler Skaggs. Flatter back up the middle, hits the mound, and into center. So Bregman picks up a one out single. Just wouldn't be an Angels Astros game without Bregman getting a knock against the Angels, especially right back up the middle. I'll tell you what, he has great range at third base. He's made a couple good plays again tonight, look routine at third. A very good young player. Ground ball to third, should do it. Valbuena to Coward, back to first. Like that baby up as the Angels even up the series and a game of peace with the victory tonight by the final of 9-1. to Boy, what a game all around. Luis Valbuena had an outstanding game himself. A home run, two-run home run and a double. The offense, 13 hits tonight, nine runs. Balanced throughout. Tyler Skaggs hey, dealt. Right the Angels even up this 
series against the Astros, one game apiece with a 9 to 1 victory. And again, pitching has done a very good job against this offense back to back games. The Astros is one of the most deep dominant offenses in baseball with two very well pitched games against them so far in this series. Take a look at the wild card standings. The Angels win along with the Twins walk off victory. Keeps the Angels two games back. Seattle won tonight against Texas. They're three and a half. Kansas City and Texas now four. Orioles four and a half. And of course the Rays five back. They lost today. And remember as you look at those standings. Wow it looks like OK you're only two games back. But that's now one less game on that calendar. So they start ticking off. That's why the every W is more important every single day. Exactly against some very good opponents. Luis Valbuena with a big game. He's down on the field with Alex Curry. Luis, after last night's game, this offense exploded out of the gates tonight. What was the big turnaround you saw from this team? Well, you know, what happened last night is what happened, you know. Uh, today is a new day. Uh, everybody pulled your heads up and come here and compete. And it was a big game for you with a home run following it up with a double. What was the key to getting the fires early on? Well, you're not looking for a good pitch. And, uh, and the side song and uh, pull a good swing and throw me fastball right there. And uh, you see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and Tyler Skaggs was dealing for you guys tonight, giving you seven strong innings. This was his first win since coming off the DL. How exciting is it to see him finally reach that potential that his team knows he can do? No, if he feels so good, you know, he's comfortable today. He throws the ball very well and inside or away. Uh, he do unbelievable job, you know. That's all I want from him. He's coming over here and competing and nothing too much and attack the, the, the hitter. Congratulations on the big win. Thank you. And the Angels even up the series with a big win tonight. A final of 9 to 1 up. The offense exploded with 13 hits, but stick around because we have Victor and Gooby's final thoughts coming up next.